What's up, my guys? And welcome back to this god-awful show known as the Wrestle Report Card. I'm your host, Cody, and tonight we're coming at you with night two of back-to-back pay-per-views. Unfortunately, this one didn't start at noon, so yeah, guess who's going to be up till 5 a.m.? Yep. Oh, damn it. Just uh, rip my mic off. Hold on. Oh yeah, we off to a great start here, my guy. But for the 12 of you that are still viewing, what I do here on the Wrestling Report Card is I take a wrestling show. I break down every match. I give them each a letter grade. And at the end, oh, I tally them son bitches up to get that show its own report card. And tonight, live from Las Vegas, AEW presents Double or Nothing. I tell you what, and we kick this son bitch off with a 21-man battle royale for Orange Cassidy's International Championship. I told y'all that son bitch was crazy. Also, my guy MJF put the AEW World Heavyweight Championship on the line in a fatal four-way against the other three pillars in AEW, and that, in my opinion, was the match of the night. Also, we had two titles change hands, plus, in the main event, you got Anarchy in the arena. I don't even know how to explain that to you, but you had the Blackpool Combat Club just going crazy against the elite. I mean, you had a leaf blower in there, the referee was bleeding, I tell you what. What I saw these guys do to another grown man with thumbtacks, those were ways I didn't even think were imaginable, but I'm going to have to refocus right now. We'll get more into that later. For now, without further ado, go on and buckle up because you can tell it's going to be a bumpy ride, and let's get to grading, my guy. And to kick this son bitch off tonight after already going 20-0 and 0 with the international title, Orange Cassie says, screw it, I'll put it up against 20 minute once in a battle royale, and that's how you start a pay-per-view right there. After outlasting 19 other men, we get down to just Orange Cassidy and Swerve, and with the kick hurt around the world, Orange Cassidy retains his international European 24-7 championship. I tell you what, I really enjoyed that. I'm going to slap a B-plus on that son, bitch. Now we're going to go over to Chris Jericho taking on Adam Cole in an unsanctioned match. That's right, AEW didn't want anything to do with it. Now, I know a lot of people are mad because it did end via referee stoppage, but that wasn't the part I was even mad about. Honestly, this crowd was terrible, my guy. I mean, and they had the audacity to chant, we want tables. Then, later in the night, they got tables in the Wardlow match, and it was straight crickets? Uh, yeah, that's why all y'all got was that Sabu spot in this match. Anyways, I'm gonna slap a C-minus on that son bitch, and we gonna move over to the tag team division, because up next, FTR puts the tag titles on the line against 64-year-old Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal with Mark Briscoe as the special guest referee, and he came out in the cutoff camo-colored referee shirt. All he was missing was the Crocs, my guy. Now, after he already booted Sanjay and Satnam Singh from ringside, right when old Marky Mark turned around, a guitar that was aimed for Dax Harwood came crashing through his school. So with no ref, down comes Aubrey Edwards, but she didn't see Karen Jarrett, who came with another guitar, and she just wiped poor Audrey out. I tell you what. So we're still here without a ref. Double J took full advantage of that as he hit Dax with one of the titles and the stroke. Now, Mark Briscoe was slowly coming too, but not fast enough because as he was making the three count, Dax kicked out. And I guess Jeff Jarrett wasn't too happy about that because he ran over and just started slapping Mark Briscoe. And I don't know if you know old Marky Mark, but if you go hit him, that son bitch is going to hit back. And when he did, FTR was waiting with the shatter machine and ain't nobody kicking out of that, my guy. FTR picks up the one, two, three and retains those titles. I'm going to slap a B on that son bitch. Now let's go into our next title match as Wardlow, the it's his TNT title against the legend Christian and I tell you what these two were just demolishing their bodies out there we saw Warlow cripple the ladder Arn Anderson bite off a dinosaur man's thumb and the 300 pound Warlow hit a swanton from 20 feet above crashing through two tables and yeah like I said earlier this crowd didn't even appreciate it now after decimated luchasaurus with that maneuver Warlow caught Christian midair powerbombed that son bitch then he climbed the ladder and retrieved and retained that TNT championship that was a solid match right there again think it could have been a little bit shorter but i'm gonna slap a b minus on that son bitch and let's keep the ball rolling let's jump over to the woman's title now is up next you have the injured jamie hader defended against her home girl tony storm and before we could even kick this son bitch off jamie hader couldn't even make her intro because out came soraya and ruby soho whooping her ass all the way to the ring now after that beatdown, we finally kicked this thing off and for the second time tonight 
Britt Baker ran out to make the save and even the odds along with Sheeta who came out with her. But even with all that and some hater raid, that injured shoulder was just too much to overcome as Tony Storm regrouped, hit the Storm Zero, and ain't nobody kicking out of that, my guy. Tony Storm picks up the one, two, three. Now, I know he had to get the title off Jamie Hayter. I mean, I know y'all are mad about that, but what'd you want him to do? I think it could have been done a little bit better, honestly, though. That's my personal opinion. I'm going to slap a C on that son, bitch. Woo, let's keep the ball rolling. Oh, we going tonight. Up next, we got the House of Black issuing an open house, open challenge. And who answers this? Oh, it's the acclaimed and daddy ass. Scissor me tenders, baby. Let's go. And bruh. Somebody go check on Buddy Murphy because Max Caster came out and put my guy in a damn body bag. Like, he had this crowd chanting Dominic. Yeah, if you didn't hear, he basically said, how you going to get cucked by a kid named Dominic? Nah, Buddy got to see Max in the parking lot after that one, my guy. Anyways, after being kept out most of the match, Daddy Ass finally tagged in. It was going absolutely nuts. But he spent a little bit too, too much time showboating, doing the suck it thing. I mean, trust me, we've all been there, brother. However, when he turned around, Malachi hit the black mass or whatever we're calling it now. But still, ain't nobody kicking out of that, my guy. The House of Black picks up the one, two, three. And for that match right there, I'm going to slap a B-plus on that son, bitch. I thought it was pretty good. But we're going to jump back over to the women's division because up next, Jay Cargill defends her TBS championship against Taya Valkyrie, and all I know is if my guy Jay loses, we're done here, and I'm switching over to Great and Battleground. I tell you what. Now, right when Taya hit the road to Valhalla, and I was starting to switch over to Peacock, I'm not a liar. Jay not only kicked out, but she got up, hit the Jaded, and ain't nobody kicking out of that, my guy. She moves to 60. And oh, but then that rat faced bastard Mark Sterling started talking shit, issued an open challenge, and I'll be damned if Chris. Statlander made her return. She walked right down, whooped Jade ass in about two minutes, and by God, Stats picks up the one, two, three, and new TBS champion, Chris Statlander. That's what I'm talking about right there. What a way to make a return. I mean, you know, I hate that Jade loses, but I'm glad she got the 60 and 0. I hear she's gonna get repackaged as a baby face moving forward. So that's gonna be tight. I'm gonna slap a B on that son bitch, but let's keep moving. Up next, we got the co-main of it. You got my guy, MJF, who blessed us with another dope entrance, by the way, defending his AEW World Heavyweight Championship against Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, and Jungle Boy Jack in possibly the greatest Fatal 4-Way that anybody has ever seen. And look, whether you were a fan of the build-up or not, you just knew that this match was gonna serve coming in. I mean, you had some pretty dope moments at one point all four guys were hitting their finishers maneuvers in a row with MJF hitting the crossroads to top it off. Shout out Cody Rhodes. And then all four of them had the next guy in some sort of submission and it looked like you were trying to fold a box without tape. I tell you what. Now there was a time where Jungle Boy had the opportunity to win the match, but once again, that nerd took the high road and it ended up costing him. Darby laid his ass out, but as Darby Allen was going for the coffin drop, MJF snuck back in, placed the title over Jungle Boy Boy, and then Darby came crashing down on that son bitch and with the injured arm in all MJF hit the side headlock and ain't Darby Allen kicking out of that my guy MJF retains the title gets the one two three and that match was great right there I'm gonna slap an A plus on that son bitch I don't know what y'all want me to say but hey Y'all know what part of the show we've gotten to that's enough of the talk because it's time for the main event it's anarchy in the arena as you got the elite going up against the Blackpool Combat Club. And by God, we start this son bitch off with Wild Thing blaring and the fight and started all the way up in the stands. And with the band still playing, you got eight guys just beating the ever loving shit out of each other. Mox is bleeding. The ref is bleeding. And this is all within the first five minutes. And the band was playing all the way until the lead singer who had some questionable We'll leave it there. Facial stuff going on. Ain't a double super kick, thank God, courtesy of the Young Bucks. And that's how you start a match, my guy. And hold up. Did John Moxley flip over a giant poker chip wrapped in barbed wire? Hey, Renee, get this man some help. And how in the hell did a leaf blower get in the ring? That's what I got to know right there. 
Dinkleberg. And I tell you what, Kitty Omega thought he was Captain America with that trash can lid. Oh, I can do this all day looking ass. Now, Claudio, you my guy and all, but you can't just boot a man's Jordans into the crowd like you Pat McAfee or something. Come on, man. And it was only one of them at that, you freaking savage. Well, next thing you know, John Moxley took that barefoot of Matt Jackson and slammed it into some thumbtacks. Then he grabbed his brother Nick's face and introduced him to those same thumbtacks immediately after. Now, it happened. Having a thumbtack covered foot wasn't bad enough. Wheelie Yuta came in and hit him in the dick. Then Mox shoved that son bitch's mouth full of even more thumbtacks. And in came Claudio with a huge uppercut, socking all of them right back out. I mean, that was crazy. And to top all this off, that son bitch, that piece of shit, Don Callis, pulled in. Takeshita, who turned on the elite, and by God, what in the hell is happening? This cost them, and the Blackpool Combat Club end up picking up the win. I mean, they beat the shit out of them, so yeah, they got the win, and I mean, this is obviously going to keep going forward. They're going to go to blood and guts. My only question is who will be the elite's fifth member at that? I tell you what, that shit was crazy right there. Now, the ending was a little bit weird, but hey, it was what it does. I'm going to slap an A- on that son bitch, and all in all, Decent pay-per-view, but I ain't gonna take my opinion on it now that we got all the grades in Let's check out the report card my guy after tallying everything up. We came out with a final letter grade of A B that's right in 84 percent now obviously this was definitely a uh, opening and closing heavy in the middle We could use some work. We need to shorten down a little bit of the matches in my opinion, but hey AEW still within their first three years. They've been working through some injuries and amongst other things. So we got to give them a break here and there. They can do things that none of us could ever do in our lifetime. So don't be assholes, okay? Well, I'm sorry I am late on this. Anybody that is tuning in, I do appreciate you. Also appreciate OG Bobby Nighthawk on the beat. Well, that's all for me today. I'm signing out. Thank y'all for tuning in. I hope all you beautiful people stay safe out there. And have a nice day.